This is James from Gamefront, and I'm gathered with some pretty special guests. I'm with Jimmy Wisenhunt. He is a designer, works a lot on combat on H1Z1, and also Steve George, the producer on H1Z1. Guys, say hello to the camera. What's happening? Uh, hello. Uh, today we've gotten to see a lot of cool things. I'm really excited about H1Z1, um, but one thing I'd like to start off with is what is going to differentiate this from games such as Daisy and Rust? Uh, scale is going to be a lot of it. I mean, we're an MMO company. We've been around for a long time, and our goal is to get to day one early access with a much more stable experience that people may be used to and give people a vertical slice, just really know the feature sets we're going for in the future and give everyone a taste of that, like right off the bat. And we're developing with the community. So it's, it's a lot of fun. We're incredibly transparent, sometimes to a fault. Like, we're streaming everything. We did a 12-hour development live stream. So yeah. we're trying to keep everyone up to date on what we're doing. Yeah, qu quality of service is, is one of the key things we focus on, and that's why we're hosting our own servers and uh, we're kind of controlling the, the player rule sets and stuff. But it's very important to us to make sure that you have a great experience when you're playing the game. Sure. Great. And I had asked this earlier. Actually, I have asked a few things earlier and gotten some information. So we're not going to have mod tools. But what we do have coming from you is a wide variety of servers. Um, can you give me some examples of differences that you're going to find between servers to match the players to their style? Sure. Th there, may, there may be a, a no guns rule set, right? You play the whole game with zero guns. I, I love there, may, that. there may be a player versus zombies exclusive where there might not be any PvP. Yeah, no, I mean, on the other side of that is we may just have no zombies at all on one server and just yeah. guns. I mean, there's we want this to be modular and find out what those fun experiences are for the masses and start with those. Kind of the great thing is we, we, we have this switch system. We're able to, out of fly, just switch on and off different components in our game. Just It's a matter of, it's a, picture a big switchboard. And you just going, okay, well, today we're going to turn off A, B, and C, and Z. And we're going to try that out, and we're going to see how it works, you know? Awesome. And uh, so one other question I have is um, the airdrops. You showed this, and to me it's new. Is this newly announced? This is brand new. It has, like, this, this is exclusive, brand new. That's it. So do we know how regular the airdrops are going to happen? Is this going to be happening hourly? Is this going to be happening daily? Well, what is the frequency of these airdrops? Okay. No idea. <laughs> um, no, we, we <laughs> yeah, no, it's something that we, we, we just got working. We got it online. It's something we've been excited about for a long time. But we're making sure that, once again, we have a fleshed out feature. It's not always the prettiest looking, but that it works from A to Z before we throw it in. And we just got that up and running. And um, yeah, no, we're not sure. We're not sure yet. We want it to be something that drives players together and force them to interact in some hopefully fun ways. Um, it may not always be a blast, but it's always the excitement of there is something really good in that. And I'm going to try to find a strategy to, you know, get get over on these guys before I get over there. You'll you'll probably see some iteration of it within the, the, our station station cash purchasing system, right? But that's about as far as we've discussed it. So whether you can earn a drop somehow in the game and how that would work out. We just haven't gotten to that point yet sure. where we're comfortable discussing it. You know? Yeah, and if someone did go through and they bought it through like our station cash store or something, you're going and you're ordering this, and it's a really good opportunity to run out and try to grab it. But who knows who else you're drawing in there to come try to take it. So it's it should be good. I was just going to ask about that. Um, let me just get a couple things, and I might be out of the loop. Fill me in. This is free to play? Yes. Uh, early access. We're starting off $20. It'll be early access uh, through that period. And after we launch the game, like full launch, it'll be free to play. Okay, and that, uh, my other question is, we're going to be doing these transactions to purchase things, uh, but at the same time, players could purchase something and it can be stolen? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So a big focus of our game is not affecting the hardcore survival aspect of the game. That is very near and dear to our hearts as designers on the team is we, that that's what drives you forward, the, the anxiety and the suspense and just always about to die. We don't want to give you something be like, here you go, for the next 10 minutes you're good, or whatever. I mean... The things you buy will also create tension, but they're also an opportunity to capitalize. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, sometimes you're gonna buy a drop for the, for the sole reason of creating chaos on the server. Yeah, you so might go buy one to put it there, uh, and then whatever. you want to go out there and you're using it as a trap. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. See, I I love the idea of it. I wonder if everybody's gonna be on board like myself. Like, you could get something that's really cheap, like cheapest thing, drop it. Nobody else is gonna know what's inside. All of a sudden, there's massive chaos. Is that kind of the angle that well, you're going for? Well, that is the angle we're going for now. Something that you know, once again, we we really want to we really want to get out there is that. 
these airdrops, we're not going to say, we're not going to go out and say like, this is a M4A1 airdrop. Like when we drop these things, if you're buying them, it's not a very specific thing. There's an opportunity to get good things out of it. So, you know, you're not going to go in and- Sort of as a, as a flying mystery chest. Right, essentially. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're not going to be able to order, I need a vehicle right now. <laughs> Cool. Um, another. Now I'm going to start getting a little bit more specific to my experiences playing H1Z1. I I enjoyed it. I felt like I did pretty good, yeah. but I couldn't find a gosh darn lighter, and I was getting furious. Uh, are lighters really scarce? Uh, lighters are pretty scarce. So we're always tuning the values on like what is scarce and what's not, and sometimes it doesn't always work as planned. Um, lighters shouldn't be probably as rare as they are. Uh, there's other solutions to it as well, though. You can create things like bow drills, and you can also create a torch. There's multiple ways to light a fire in the game. So, yeah. But it is very angelic. Whenever you get a lighter, you're like, oh, yeah, God. thank God, <laughs> and I can light a fire. So. Um, the torch, that's pretty interesting. How do you light the torch without a lighter? Is it like, is there a flint and steel Magically. style thing? Magically, you just yeah. rip it out of your pocket, it's on fire. I mean, right yeah. now, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and, and the other fire stars, he, he mentioned a bow drill. Are you familiar with a bow drill? I've never even oh, heard of so a bow drill. It's a, very I, mechanism. it's a piece of wood with a stick that you hold that has another piece of string, and you kind of kind of go back and forth on it until it creates a little uh, a spark. amber, a spark, yeah. and then you ignite it into a flame. Yep. That makes totally. sense. What I was going to do at home was get a bow and try to shoot drill pieces out of it, <laughs> and that does not work. Um, so, cool, but you're not going to be able to say, I want to purchase a lighter and just get a lighter because right. it's going be, to be random drops. Yeah, and we want that stuff in the world. We Once again, any we don't want to give anyone a particular advantage because they went and spent money. It's hardcore survival. Cool. And the last thing I wanted to ask you guys about was uh, in this industry, we're getting more and more into early access. And I want to ask you guys, how do you want to be judged on early access? What are the things that you want us to uh, tell our viewers of like, this is why you should jump into an early access game, our early access game? Like, how do you expect these to be judged? Oh, go for it. No, I was going to say, I mean, I, I uh, play a ton of games in general and early access is a big part of my steam library right now and i don't play 97 percent of them anymore so the big thing with me is or working at soe is we want to convey that this is a big picture long-term thing i mean just look at our past look at what we've done with planet side 2 we've done with everquest and our other franchises we are not going to just stop working on that's a big problem with early access these days it seems and um look at the big picture what we're saying on reddit or our h1z1 and yeah and also, our version of Early Access has a very high quality bar associated with it. As compared to the rest yeah. of Early compared Access. Compared to the, the, the standard. Uh, and I, I'd like to wrap it up, but if there's anything that you guys want to make sure is known, is there anything you wanted to talk about before we wrap up this interview? Um, Reddit, we're not selling guns. I, I don't know where you got that. <laughs> All right. I think he's good. <laughs> cool. Guys, thank you so much for your time. I really Thanks. appreciate it, and I look forward to playing H1Z1.